I'm not Tupac, but I get around Riding on my bike is where I can be found I don't drive a car cause I'm just too proud So I'll tell the story of how it first went down Back in 2014, it came time for me to make a serious life decision. Yes, it came time for me to make my first bicycle trailer. I had read about a million of those Instructables articles on how to do it, and they're all different. It's not like there's one right way to build a bicycle trailer. So in this video, I'll show you how I built mine. Readsandmachines.com This trailer was constructed primarily of recycled bed frames and two 26 inch wheels I had from an old mountain bike I took apart, which meant this was going to be a really big trailer. I figured for my first trailer build I wanted to make something heavy duty. So let's get started. The first issue I ran into was the fact that the rear wheel from the bike has a longer axle than the front one because it has to have room for the free wheel. I wanted to make the trailer as symmetrical as possible, and still be able to use the quick release skewers when taking the wheels on and off. So what I did was I took apart the rear axle, turned it down to lengthen the lathe, and then cut and re-threaded the skewer, and then put it back together, thereby making both axles the same length. Now we'll look at the frame. I began by disassembling the bed frames by any means necessary, resorting to just drilling out the rivets that were holding them together. I designed the trailer frame to best utilize these two C-shaped pieces from the bed frames that were the legs, since they were made out of square tubing and made it most convenient for me. I started by trimming the ends a little bit to get the width I wanted, and then welded them together to form a square. This would be the basis of the trailer frame. I then notched the ends on some of the angle pieces and fit them in the square where they would be used to support the wheels on the inside. These were then welded in place. I cut some dropouts for the wheels on the milling machine out of some pieces of plate, though these easily could have been made with a hacksaw, a file, and a hand drill. I made a spacing jig for holding these together while welding basically a piece of rod the same length as the wheel axles with two tapped holes on the ends. This made clamping a whole lot easier and eliminated the possibility they would end up too narrow or too wide after welding. And look at that, it's starting to look like a trailer. At this point I realized the trailer frame looked pretty awkwardly wide and wanted to make it longer. So I welded three angle pieces together and attached those on the front. Now let's look at the trailer hitch. A lot of those Instructables guides recommended using a swivel caster for this part, and I partially used this idea. The only difference was I added an extra layer of complexity by throwing in a scooter handlebar bearing. This allowed the trailer to have more degrees of freedom. In hindsight this was kind of unnecessary, but I figured I was already over engineering this thing enough as it is so it couldn't hurt. I had to modify the scooter part to be able to accept the swivel caster's axle. I did this by machining a bushing, basically a half inch bolt with a hole through it, and then attached it into the scooter part. This would take up any slot between the two components. Lastly, I needed a way to mount it on the bike. I decided to attach the caster onto a steel plate, which was then attached onto the rear rack on my bike. I then machined two aluminum brackets to match the contours of the rear rack tubing. This seemed like the most secure way for me. Now one thing I didn't really like about the swivel caster was that these bearings are designed to take load axially, not radially, as in the case of a trailer hitch. I think over time all the bearings actually fell out, and a bunch of sand got clogged up in there. But nonetheless it did its job. Next is the linkage between the trailer hitch and the trailer itself. At this point I didn't really know what to do, so I just started by lining up the trailer behind the bike level, and then working backwards from there. I realized this linkage would have to increase in elevation, and bend over to the right slightly to meet with the trailer hitch. 
I began by bolting one of those angle pieces onto the trailer, and then cutting it and bending it to fit the shape that was needed. Once all the welding was done, I took it for an initial test ride, and I realized quickly that this linkage was way too flimsy, as it would flex a lot while riding. So I bolted another angle piece on, and reinforced it, thus making one of the heaviest components of the trailer. A few more things before we get to the cool part. I wanted to make some fender type things to prevent cargo from running into the wheels. I started this by making yet another square, this time out of the small angle pieces. I then cut this in half with possibly the most awkward hacksawing position ever, and then welded them on the frame. I also made a couple of hooks for bungee cords, and welded those on too. I then made a deck for the top of the trailer out of two pieces of particle board. I made this easily removable by welding bolt stubs onto the trailer frame and securing it on with wing nuts. Look who's sitting pretty. At this point the trailer was ready for service, but I wanted to add a cargo bay to make use of all that space underneath the deck. So I took the trailer out for its maiden voyage to get the piece of metal for the cargo bay. Conveniently the metal store had the perfect sized piece of aluminum for this, and the trailer hauled it easily. Once I got it home, I began by cutting out the flat pattern with aviation snips. I didn't have any actual bending equipment, so I improvised by clamping a piece of angle iron onto it, and bending it with vice grips and a mallet, which actually did a pretty good job. Once I had the shape completed, I test fit it in the trailer frame, and drilled rivet holes to attach it all together, and to attach it on the frame. I used aluminum pop rivets to hold it all together. After that, I reinforced the bottom of the cargo bay with a piece of pegboard, which was held on with eyelet screws, and acorn nuts from the bottom. And now the cargo bay is finished. A few finishing touches for the trailer, were a light mount, and of course, my license plate. This trailer saw a fair amount of use hauling lots of cargo to and from the foundry. Its size and strength proved very useful for this. I also used it for a few bicycle barbecues. The amount of firewood I could carry was incredible. The main downside of this trailer was I had limited storage space, and I had to disassemble the linkage and the wheels every time I took it inside. It barely fit up staircases and through doorways. It was also very wide, barely fitting in a standard sized bike lane, which made it a bit uncomfortable to take on streets. The heaviest load I ever carried with this thing was a bunch of cargo and a cast iron pedestal from a bench grinder. This ended up destroying one of the tire tubes, but I don't take full responsibility. The tire popped because the valve stem got sheared off, and I noticed the rim didn't have the valve hole deburred, so I blame the manufacturer. The final fate of this trailer was I ended up trading it away for a bunch of music equipment. I realized I wasn't getting that much use of it, because it only seemed worthwhile if I was hauling a lot of cargo. It didn't make sense for a regular sized load. For that reason I decided I would later make a smaller trailer, which I did a couple years ago, so stay tuned for the video on that. This one was one tenth as heavy, and it didn't even require any welding. If you would like more information on this bicycle trailer build, you can check out the 8 part blog post on greensandmachines.com, which includes a lot of information that didn't make it into the video. And stay tuned for the video of my new trailer build.